Thank you and hello for me. I want to talk about open source performance monitoring. The example is on the product Cacti. I'm a member of the Cacti core team. But before I start my speech, I want to thank both NetWays and LVM, my employer, for being here. Let me spend a few words about LVM. LVM Insurance is located at Münster in Germany and we're providing IT services for about 10,000 users. We do this with around 400 IT, uh, 500 IT professionals. We are creating our own business application with more than 200 of them. And one of our, our goals is to be platform independent. There's a his history about open source at LVM. Since um, 2001, our standard desktop is Linux desktop. We first started with Linux from scratch and then went to Red Hat and now arrived at Ubuntu. Um, you will know that our standard op uh, office suite is OpenOffice. And for example, we are just uh, using a telephony solution based on asterisk. 2,100 branch offices all over Germany are working with this appliance. We also sponsor open source activities. For example, the software called Gemeinschaft is used with asterisk to configure it. If anybody is interested in such a solution, let's talk during break. And we're still recruiting. So why shall we do performance monitoring? I will talk about this uh, and then I will show you the Cacti architecture, the magic of templates, which is a quite important topic with Cacti, the plugin ecosystem and the future of the project. So why should we talk about performance monitoring? Most of you will already have fault management and there's much more to do in this area of uh, watching at your systems and only to know whether your systems are up. Of course, when you do have nothing in place currently, you will start with fault management. You will want to know whether your machines are up and running, whether your services are up and running, or whether the metrics provided by your checks are okay. So you will place thresholds on all this stuff. Most of this is based on the current timestamp. So you know at the moment what's happening. And it tells you whether things are okay or not okay. But there's more to that. This graph is showing the uh, average application response time of our business application. This is the most wanted performance graph in the whole company. It tells you uh, <coughs> which performance every single user out of those 10,000 users currently has. It tells you on a five minute interval and at the current moment, the response time was about 500 milliseconds. This is a three tire Java based application. I suppose half of a second as an average response time is quite okay. But things are not always good looking. In this case, no system was down. There was no fault. But it's somewhat bad looking graph. So let's zoom into it to get the exact time frame. And now you see that there was something bad going on starting at 1540 and lasting about 15 minutes. So uh, history matters. It's not only the current time summary that you may be interested in. Let's have another example. Um, this is a very recent example of the Cacta system itself. There was a DB outage uh, at some point in time and this DB outage was tackled. It was a fault and the fault was tackled. But as a result of the fault, the file size of the MySQL log increased and this was not seen very early. So what tells you it, that trend matters. It's not always good to know what is happening at the time, but whether it is increasing or decreasing. 
This all, uh, also helps with <coughs> capacity management. Um, if you do not look at a daily graph, but for example at a yearly graph, you will be able to tell your managers whether you need new disk storage next year or need more CPU power or stuff like this. All this is not available with fault management only. Next one shows you um, the network traffic graph of our internet interface. It was uh, kept until September to 50 megabit. It was not enough, of course. Um, and it tells you another discipline that is often uh, tackled with uh, Cactar. This is simply called billing. So you will be able to bill customers, for example, uh, in uh, wireless scenarios. Next one is showing uh, a Nagios system. Yes, we do have Nagios as well for about 8,000 devices out in the network. Uh, and this is one of the Nagios servers. And you clearly see there is some green space left. This is left for more CPU load. And the black one is um, the IO weight. So from this graph, you can see that a single CPU is used for, uh, for IO only. And this is maybe headed at when doing optimization. All this are topics that you can tackle when you have performance management in place. Uh, the next topic I'll talk about is the Kekta architecture, how it's built. The Kekta system itself sits on RD tool. We strongly rely on RD tool both for storing the performance values and for graphing. The main code is written in PHP with some JavaScript stuff, and we use MySQL as a standard database. Of course, it's a browser-based application, so we need a web server in between. The typical setup works like this. You are sitting in front of your browser and logging into the Cacta server system. Uh, there is some configuration information that you are tackling, that you are dealing with. Those configuration informations are stored in the MySQL database. And then there is a second component within the Cacti server. It's called the Polar. This Polar will go out to your targets and request all the data that you need. So you may um, look at your routers, at your PBX servers or applications. The data returned, in this case, the 42, you know it's always 42, is stored in RD files. And out of those RD files, you will create those nice looking graphs. What are the key components? Um, the typical Kekta setup is a single server setup, and it's agentless, at least if you do not count as an MP as an agent. So it's quite easy. It's browser based, so you can manage it from everywhere. We have a fast uh, and extensible data collector. I come to this later. We have a template engine. This is quite important. That's uh, the next chapter I will talk about this. And a plugin ecosystem to extend the functionality of the Cacta. And it's quite scalable. We now know several uh, companies out there having more than one million data source being polled in less than 100 seconds. The main administration view shows the menu on the left side where you can select all those templates and stuff. On the right side, you have typically a tabular representation of the data. And this is a um, zoom of the graph view where you have typically on the left side a graph tree and on the right side the graphs. In this example, you see the DHCP performance of two of our DHCP servers. Let's have a view at uh, the vocabulary used with Cacti. There are some words that you may already know from Nagios or other systems, but they may be used differently here. 
The first thing to know about is the data input method. You may simply call, call this a script and it's often as simple as that. The data input method is used to fetch data, for example, a temperature from your router or fan speed or stuff like this. Then there's a data query. There's something different about this because it's used to fetch tabular data, for example, interface statistics. You know, you may have systems with not only one interface, so you have a table of data, and for this you have data queries. Then there's the data template. The data template defines the storage pattern for your data. So many of those parameters seen in the data template are used to define the RRD file. Next one is the graph template. The graph template itself de uh, defines the graphical layout. And again, most of the parameters seen here are used to define the RRD to a graph statement. The last one is not related to RRD tool in any way. It's the host template. The host template groups all graph templates that you need for a specific device. That is, if you use graph templates in different, uh, for different uh, types of servers, for example, your uh, web servers, your routers, your switches, you can define different host templates and reuse the same graph template all over the place. The last definition is the plugin. This is used for adding new functionality to the Kekta core system without changing the code. So we provide APIs, I come to this later on, uh, where you can add your own code without even touching a single line of code of the Cacti core. There are several dozens of plugins out there. I enumerate uh, a few of them here. Threshold alerting is kind of fault management system within Cacti. You can define tabular reports, you have weather maps, dashboards, you name it. Taking the other way around, you will usually start with a new device. When adding a new device to Cacti, you will associate it with a host template, defining the type of the device, being it a router, a switch, a PBX example, where uh, you can have an application that you monitor here, for example, web service and stuff like this, all represented by different host templates. Those inherit multiple graph templates, which in turn inherit data templates, which are uh, triggered by data input methods, a script. So you know, commenting is often misunderstood. Now let's turn to the magic of templates. Why all those templates? Well, you usually have multiple dev devices of the same type, be it network equipment like router switches, firewalls or load balancers, be it storage devices, um, servers, stuff like this. You usually cover each of those types with a single host template, which inherits all graphs used. With those templates, you define global properties as a single template, and each time you decide to change one of those templates, you only change it in one place. It's automatically propagated to all objects derived from this template. So for example, if you are not happy with the green color in your graph, you simply change the graph template, for example, to show it a, a red color. And then it's automatically uh, propagated to all graphs derived from this graph template. And there's another interesting issue with those templates. We provide you with a template repository where users like you post their own templates that they created with their devices. So it is very likely that when you have a new device, 
and deploy it in your IT infrastructure, that there's already a template out there. And it's as simply as you download this template, import it into the Cactus system using a single click on your browser, and then it's there. And you can uh, assign it with, uh, to, to the device, and you can cr create all those graphs. And no more hassling with, with uh, uh, MIBs or stuff like this. Of course, you can create your uh, own templates, custom templates. And uh, Cacti is featuring a quite extensive manual, more than 200 pages, with step-by-step -step procedure how to create each of those templates. So you can easily follow the procedure how to create them. For example, let's turn to uh, custom script. Uh, I won't show you uh, the interface uh, to do SNMP because it's built in. There's nothing to do for you on the SNMP side. In this example, you provide a nice name. In this case, it's Unix ping host. You tell Cacta that's a script and you provide it with the input script, a, str a string that's used to call the script. Here you see a parameter. The parameter is called an input field. You define it here. In this case, you will associate it with the host name where the uh, script is related to. In this very simple example, we only have a single out output parameter, but it's possible that you have multiple output parameters here. That's all. Now let's turn to the data template. Those of you who are familiar with RD2 will recognize many parameters already known from RD2. Again, you have some, some nice name. You associate it with a uh, data input method that is used to fetch the data. Then you ha have some RA definitions. You have a step size. And then there's uh, the data source item uh, within the RD file. Of course, you can have multiple data source items here. And that's all. Now, the graph template. The important thing is shown on the top. You have an area here which uh, is related to the ping response time. The area is uh, uh, drawn in yellow. And then you have three legend entries uh, called current, average, and maximum, which are related to the consolidation functions of last, average, and maximum. You can define a nice name for the template and every inheritance of this template is prepended with the host description of the host currently in use. On the lower side, not shown, are multitude of parameters used for the RD2 graph statement. At last, this is the host template, which groups several graph templates. In this example, CPU usage, load average, memory usage, and on the lower side, the, template, uh, the, the table related data like SNMP interface statistics and monitored petitions, which shows you the usage of your file system petitions. And then you have those nice graphs. If you click on any graph within the Cacti system, you will be shown with a display of all RRAs that you defined in your, within your graph template. Usually, this is a daily view, a weekly view, a monthly, and a yearly. Not shown here, because there's no mu <laughs> not so much space on the slide. And from this example, you can see, uh, clearly see uh, the trending. In this case, there's no trending, because again, this is the internet traffic of our internet router some years ago. It was kept at around 20 megabits, so there's no peak above 20 megabits. And you see there's a slight deviation between the line and the area. That's the difference between average traffic and peak traffic. You will know this because in case there's no difference between both, your interface is saturated. There's no, no, uh, no more space left. 
And you see from the yearly graph that our interface was quite saturated. So users were complaining about internet being slow. But of course, internet was not slow, only our uplink. But there are more than, than uh, traffic graphs. This example shows a um, template for a fax server, in this case our Hilafax system. And if you want, you can monitor even uh, the printed pages of your printers. Or if you like, the toner level. Everything's possible. And here's how to get the templates. There are literally hundreds of templates out there. There's the Cacti Scripts and Templates Forum and the Template Repository. And as I already told you, it's as simply as download the templ template, it's, an, uh, it's uh, stored as an XML format, upload it to your system, import it into the Cacti system, and that's it. Wow. As I already told you, there is such a thing as a manual, not known to many of you. I, I'm aware of this, um, but I hope it works. Let's now turn to the plugin ecosystem. The plugin architecture is one of the, sorry? Uh, the plugin architecture is one of the most important uh, things uh, within Cacti, at least starting at version 087, which is the current main version we are currently using. The plugin architecture extends Cacti. Currently, it consists of a set of files which are equal to the core code files, but some few lines added. Those few lines, we call them hooks, represent a defined API to the user. That is, in the stream of commands being executed within the code, there are several well-defined points where you can hook in your own code but you do not do so by changing the core codes, but simply call those functions that we provide. Those functions are, of course, documented on the website, in the manual. And using those defined hooks, it's very easy to both develop plugins or simply use them. Installing a plugin is done this way. You download typically typically a targz tar file, untar it onto your system, throw it into the plugins folder, click install on the web page, and that's it. Then the plugin is installed. So it's literally less typically than 10 or 15 minutes to install a plugin. Those plugins um, may extend the, the menu structure I've already shown you. They may add tabs on top of the graph view. Of course, you can access all SQL tables within your plugins. You can run custom polling extensions. And as I already told you, it's quite easy to download and install them. On the next slides, I will show you some of those plugins, uh, starting with, with my favorite plugin. I've created this, uh, um, I suppose it was two years ago. It's called Automate. Many of you who are afraid of administering systems uh, from your web browser do, do know what they are complaining about. Clicking here, clicking there, clicking everywhere, click, 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 it's tedious. This is why Automate was created. because Cacti without it requires you to install a device to, to, to define it, associate a host template with it, and then create graphs and graphs and graphs and place them into a tree and place them into a tree and place them into a tree and it's tedious. Automate extends the features by defining some rules. I've called them graph rules and tree rules. I will show you uh, um, the graph rules in greater detail. The key thing is that having this plugin installed and having some rules in place, you don't need to create a single graph anymore. It will be automatically 
created based on your rules. If an interface is down, you won't want to graph it. If your interface, interface description contains a specific string, you may decide, oh, I don't want this uh, interface to be graphed, or yes, this specific interface shall be graphed, and stuff like this. You can define a rule, and that's all. It will be created each time a new host is created. Each time a re-index on a host is done, for example, if you add new interfaces, they are automatically uh, taken into account. You don't need to click anywhere anymore. And they are automatically placed onto the tree wherever you want. You can even place them on the tree multiple times, if you like this. So let's have a glance uh, on a how to define a graph rule. The key fact is that you have to select the data query that you are working on. In this case, it's the SNMP interface statistics. And you have to define which graph shall be created. In this case, it's a 64-bit uh, uh, traffic graph, the standard graph for most systems except for Windows. They don't have 64-bit counters, bad. Uh, as long as you are um, fighting with your rules, you should not enable them because you will have funny graphs being created at the very moment. So in most cases, when you start to define a new rule, you will have this checkbox unchecked. Only check it when you're ready. Then there's the section where you define the hosts that are eligible for this rule and uh, some more stuff, but let's turn first to the selection of the hosts. You may want to create a rule that only works on specific hosts. So with this plugin you are able to select every MySQL column that is available on the system as a selection to define the eligible hosts. In this case, we the rule was related to our Enterosis and 7 switches, so I decided the host template has to contain the, name, the text switch, and it has to contain the text N7, and the system uh, shall be SNMP version 2 or up. You know why? 64-bit counters are only defined for SNMP version 2 and up. So this way, uh, for, for example, regular expressions are, are available as well, so it's not, not only the, the standard um, SQL parameters that you may use or expressions. You may use regular expressions as well. And then you're provided with a list of hosts that match your current criteria. If you see a device in there that you do not want to see, uh, you have to fiddle a bit uh, around with your rules until the exact list of eligible hosts is shown. And after that, you will enable the rule to take effect. So this was the first part, to define the host that should be tackled by this rule. And now there's the second part. Uh, in this case, it, it was a switch, and uh, as you might know, already a switch has many, many interfaces. And we do not want to graph all of them. In this case, we excluded all those interfaces that uh, took an IF description um, containing GBIC or SFP but the EF uh, OPA status should match the string up. The hardware address should not be empty, of course, and the interface name uh, shall not begin with host, RTR, or LO. So I exclude those interfaces, and again, there is a list to test if all interfaces that you want to see are matched, and then you can enable the rule. In this list, uh, not shown here, uh, every interfaces that are already created with graphs are grayed out. So that you have a uh, first glance to see whether you already have graphs in place. Of course, the automatism won't create graphs that are already in place. All in all, uh, for interface traffic alone, we have now 14 rules in place. And they guarantee, together with all those other rules, that uh, at the moment in our company, there's no one 
who creates any graph. They are all created automatically. So, for, in, uh, for example, if the whole system went empty, I think simply activate those rules, select all hosts, say apply rules, and that's it. Whole system set up in less than, let's say, 10 minutes. Okay, it takes some time to create all the graphs <laughs> for the system, but not for me. <laughs> okay, let's automate. Let's turn to report it. Report it is um, a kind of alternative when you do not like graphs, or not only like graphs, or your manager won't be, uh, will be provide, wants to be provided with, with some tabular data. Then you will re use Reported. Reported was created for Ford Motor Company from uh, one of our colleagues who uh, joined the Cacti team two years ago. Uh, and with this plugin, you will define some, some uh, names and define a time span that should, shall be covered by the, by the report. And again, there is some automatism here. You relate this report, if it's possible, to a host template and optionally to, to a data item filter. Why this? If you have created a host, in this case, it's used for our BlackBerry Enterprise servers, and you add a new server, you do not want to change the, uh, the report and tell him, hey, there's a new server, take him into account, uh, create those reports using the new server as well. Using those parameters, you don't, there's no need to do this. It will be taken automatically into the next report. There are many, many more parameters. I won't bother you with them. This is how uh, those uh, reports will look like. I've grayed out the left side uh, due to confidenti confidentiality reasons. And this is a, a zoom into a report. In this case, we uh, reported uh, storage used from the uh, host map. On the left side, you have the total storage size. On the right side, the storage used. And you can um, sort each column up or down as you want. You can create your own calculations based of, on those parameters. In this uh, case, we define the usage percentage, of course, the division of both parameters. And you may even want to sort by, by this color. You can switch over to some nice looking graphs. In this case, it's a 3D pie chart, but we have also bar charts, line charts, and stuff like this. I remember there were spider graphs. I do not know why, why those may, may help. And in this case, it's um, restricted to the, to the top 10 users over here. You can select this dropdown and choose a different setup. Now let's turn to funny weather maps. This again is a um, chart from Ford Motor Company created in, uh, back in two 2007. And it shows you the uh, setup of the global switches of Ford Motor Company and the traffic between them in both directions. Uh, the numbers printed here are the percentages of the usage you may print uh, everything there. For example, delay, jitter, or wh what you want. Um, the color of the arrows uh, is important as well. Green depicts everything's quite okay. Red is not so good. Okay, there's no red one here. And each time you hover over such a graph, you will see those nice graphs. Of course, the backgrounds are customizable and hovering graphs I've already shown you. Here's another weather map. Things may look like this. Very interesting one. Or if you prefer, like this. Next plugin called Nectar. Sometimes the need arises to send uh, specific uh, graphs to, to somebody, for example, customers or colleagues, stuff like this. So you are able to set up 
uh, defined list of, of graphs that you want to export, the time span used for the export, and uh, then at a specific point in time, those graphs will, will be generated and sent out. It is possible to click on any of those graphs and you automatically will be thrown at the Cacti page showing these graphs. Um, this requires, of course, that you have a valid Cacti user ID. Perhaps your customers do not have this. This is only a small uh, part of the plugins that are currently available. Today I heard some talks uh, about baselining, for example. I do not recommend the, the, the threshold plugin for you. Threshold is, is our way to do fault monitoring. If, if you do only want to use a single uh, monitoring system and uh, suppose that Cacti is useful, you may use threshold. Of course, nobody of you will drop your Nagios installation in favor of, of uh, the threshold plugin. But one of the advantages is that it already includes baselining. So you can define a specific interval, for example, go a day back and compare both values if they differ by more than 20% throw an alarm. Or go one week back and if um, the lower value is more than 20% lower than usual, then throw an alarm. Or go back one month is difficult to calculate, you know. Uh, one year, <laughs> it's perhaps easier. Um, then you can throw thre thresholds based on the different values taken one week back and the current date. I do not recommend this, uh, as I already told in the speech of um, uh, Mr. Jean. I'm quite afraid of baselining, uh, but this is a discussion we should uh, take during the break. Here's how to get those fancy plugins. Uh, I've listed three more of them but it's worth scanning the plugin announcement forum or the plugin repository. There are crazy plugins out there. My, my favorite is, is the, the, the Christmas plugin. It changes the log, login screen, shows fancy uh, uh, pictures of, <laughs> you know, winterscape and uh, shows falling, falling snow. <laughs> it's a plugin. Okay. The future of cacti. As you might already, already know, coders love Unicode. So finally, we have to get there. Internationalization is now part of the cacti core code. The currently available languages are listed here, and it depends on you to add more. Uh, Personal, uh, personally, I must admit that I'm not able to verify the Chinese translation. I've, I've already got difficulties with, with Japanese and Russian as well. There's automatic language uh, detection based on your environment settings. There's a time zone support if you choose to, to use it. And with internationalization, it's possible to even uh, translate the text uh, of the plugins. The text must be provided by the plugin provider, uh, but if you provide those texts, they will be automatically integrated into Cacti, and so it's perfectly possible to use French, Swedish, German, if you like, and other languages. Here's a short teaser about, uh, from, from the current uh, uh, view. On the left side, I've already shown you the management interface. Now those um, parts are collapsible because they grew up uh, adding more and more plugins. They, they, they grew up, so it's nice to have them collapsible. This, uh, you can change uh, the space used by the management interface. You have tables sortable by every column usually. You have uh, filters. This is a very simple string filter, but you can have more filters here. Um, and as usual, you have multi-select with a single action. You can perform uh, a single action on multiple items in one run. And here's the famous internationalization dropdown. 
with the currently available languages. But there's more. Finally, 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 the plugin architecture is part of the core code. Personally, I did not understand why, we, why it took so long, to be, to be honest. I'd like to have had it in 087 already, but um, I'm not alone on this <laughs> on the project. So it's now built in uh, the, the, the new version. And there's a completely rewritten command line interface. I know there might be people out there who do not want to use Automate for what reason ever, and who prefer to use uh, something like a CLI interface to script everything. Uh, this is possible with 087 already, but there are um, less than, let's say, a dozen uh, uh, scripts available. And this was completely rewritten and extended to quite everything. So if you have a CMDB in place and do want to create every user from there with every permission you want to have, it's possible. Currently, we are already able to interface to, to uh, systems like LDAP or Active Directory. You can have web browser-based uh, authentication. Uh, but if you want to generate those users, it's possible. Uh, you can even uh, add templates uh, using the CLI. And then there is uh, RD tool support. Um, if you have followed the um, evolution of RD tool, you will know that between version 1.2 and 1.3 and currently 1.4, there was a huge change, both in functionality and in the systems uh, that are used to, to do the graphing. Um, Cacti, as of 087, mostly uses the parameters available with RD tool 1.2. But there are many, many more parameters out there. And all of them, all of them are supported by version 1 of Cacti. For example, there's the right axis, manual or automatic scaling, grid fitting, color tags for almost everything out there. Full font support, which was quite a bad thing. Watermark support, templated X-grid support, dash support borders, font smoothing, pango markup, and stuff like this. Uh, very recent, uh, some colleagues uh, put some effort into the Windows uh, part of, of RD2. So currently it's uh, going to be available that the full font support, not available with Windows RD tool currently, will be available very soon. Again, with full font support. That is quite a bit of an issue with, with Windows systems. Yeah, what's more? We are currently using very few JavaScript support. This, will, uh, this is going to change with the next version. We use uh, jQuery and jQuery UI, several plugins. And yes, we do use AJAX. Why do we do it? Um, you've seen already some of those dropdowns. They can be ugly, grow uh, ugly, be beyond measure. Uh, if you create a graph by hand, what you should not do. It is possible to have a drop-down of 100,000 data sources that you can place onto your new graph. Loading a drop-down of 100,000 data sources makes it look fun. So we have autocomplete fields, and we have drag-and-drop item reordering instead of some, some arrows that you, uh, that you click on. We have tab views, we have resizable menus and columns, stuff like this. And a completely new tree design. This was long overdue. And we are heading uh, towards scalability. The, the basic Cacta system uh, that was created um, about 10 years ago was mostly used in s small, small office uh, environments. Uh, but with uh, the new Polar that we are using, 
Um, we have installations, uh, I already told you, with more than one million data sources being polled in quite less than 100 seconds. But as you already may know, the world is not enough. <laughs> one million is not enough. There are requests out there to scale beyond that. Yes, uh, to fill the 300 second interval, you can multiply by three, so you end up be, uh, being at three million data sources being polled every five minutes. That's possible nowadays. That's a bit of a bit of an issue. You you need some some uh, quite uh, deep skills of Cacti and MySQL to to set up such a system. But we finally want to distribute the polling. Uh, nowadays, there's there's no reason to do so. It, it scales quite well. But if you want to go beyond three million data sources, okay, then we have to do uh, multiple polars. There are some designs already out there, but not yet any code. At least no, no uh, open source code, I should say. Uh, to do so, you currently require the Boost plugin. Uh, again, plugin, so you don't change core code to get those, this performance. The Boost plugin is kind of a predecessor of the RE cache daemon. It caches the data that you fetch from your targets in a My MySQL table. Why do we do so? It's quite more efficient to do a bulk write to RD files than to write every five minutes. If you use a plain Nagas installation without a, a RD ca cache daemon, you will know what I'm talking about. Simply drives you crazy. One million data sources with permanent I/O not possible at all. So uh, it is possible to cache all those data and, for example, write them out to the file every two hours or so, or every four hours. And of course, if you uh, look at a graph, um, the caching is intercepted, and the data is fetched from the MySQL table prior to the graph being displayed. And you will require MySQL memory tables. I know there are still installations out there that use MySQL version 3, yes, and of course version 4. And you will need quite a current MySQL version to get all the maximum performance. At least I've gathered some useful links for you. And this is the Cacta team. We met in August at San Jose as we want to do each and every year. Now it's time for questions. So not, not that much questions. <laughs> but I do, oh, over there. You first. Um, when you're talking about using jQuery in future releases, um, when I try to play around with uh, jQuery, I realized that um, there is a huge difference between using it in Microsoft Internet Explorer versus Firefox. That means in Firefox you can display the graph instantly, whereas Microsoft Internet Explorer will use up to 30, 40 seconds to display a complex yeah. graph. Is yeah, this there, also yeah. somehow addressed? Um, we do not use jQuery for uh, uh, um, almost everything, but only for very uh, specific uh, topics. So for graphing, we do not have this experience because we do not use jQuery for graphing. It's, it's more on, on the interface side. So um, I already told you about the huge difference between RD to 1.2 and 1.4. So to, to um, gray out those parameters not available for RD to 1.2 users, we have to do a lot of JavaScript or, or jQuery stuff. Uh, do you have any idea when newer versions of Cacti, uh, newer than 8, uh, 087, will arrive in Debian? Ah, Debian is <laughs> always an issue. Um, it's, yeah, um, the, the file layout of, of the Cacti uh, um, code that we provide 
uh, differs with uh, the expectation of the Debian team. Uh, let me phrase it this way. And I do not want to, to discuss uh, who is wrong or who is right, uh, but unfortunately, this is one of the reasons why Debian is quite behind. So normally, I uh, recommend using the, the tar GZ that we provide in favor of uh, the packages provided by, by the Debian team because they are simply quite behind. And we are not in touch, uh, or not in very deep touch, with the uh, Debian maintainers. So I can't answer this Debian-related question. I can tell you when the next releases of Cacti itself will be available. Uh, the next one will be available, I suppose, end of the week. It's 087 I. Uh, 1.0.0 .0 is still pre-alpha. I can show you, uh, it's on, on my laptop, <laughs> the current code, of course. <laughs> um, and we uh, need everyone who is able to test the new version as soon as we release an uh, alpha version. I hope we will release it this year. Um, at least two of my plugins are already compatible with <laughs> the 1.0.0 version. Any more questions? I do have a, a question. Oh, you? Do you have a question? So maybe I will ask my question now. Um, it's not that CACTI related, but it's uh, a question for, for using the, the knowledge within the CACTI templates. Uh, in the CACTI template, there are many informations uh, gave that from MIPS or, or whatever. And is there a, a possibility or a, a solution to use this information for Nagios monitoring or <coughs> something like that, that, that you know of? Um, not that you are able to use it now. We are discussing those issues since, since four years with Ethan Galstad, without success currently. <laughs> Having Maybe uh, get in touch with the Signa team? <laughs> Perhaps, <laughs> if, if it helps. Um, um, in most cases, people who are using Nagios or Itzinga won't uh, drop it in favor of Cacti. And I understand perfectly that uh, that would, would be no use. But it may extend your uh, uh, ability to do monitoring as a whole um, if you use not only fault management, but performance management, capacity management, and stuff like this. So the question is all uh, um, uh, most often rephrased, how can we interact between the both of them? How can we interact between Nagios Itzinga and Cacti? And as I already told you, there, uh, there are eff have been efforts, but no code yet. There have been plugins which have been dropped by their developers it's open source, so you can't lay pressure on, on them. But it should be very nice to have the ability to switch from one system to the other. Very recently, we had a huge performance problem within our company, which was simply solved by scrolling over dozens of CPU uh, statistics, seeing IO weight increasing since two weeks. And we did not know why the hell did IO weight increase. There was no fault in the whole system. We have had trouble, trouble, trouble. And we've seen this on the graphs. You can point your finger on which day this occurred. And at least this problem was resolved last Saturday. It was some dust on a fiber that was causing this. Dust on the fiber, okay? So that's what you're heading at with fault management and performance management. But the uh, answer is no, there's no currently current uh, plugin that integrates well be, uh, both worlds. Okay. There are more questions over there. Um, when to integrate uh, Nagios Isinga with Kakti? Uh, Maybe a way could be to uh, feedback uh, passive check results to Nagios Core 
from the Threshold plugin? What do you think about it? I'm not a very experienced user of the Threshold plugin, to be honest, because in our company we are using Tivoli monitoring for this, then we are using Nagios for the outside world, then we are using Cacti for performance work, and we are using Sys for the hardware, then we are using... <laughs> okay, <laughs> see? Um, any good idea, provide code, we are happy to feel it in our system. Any idea when you will have uh, ready something like um, the times when a, when a, a poll is done? So for, for some polls, I want to do them only on every half hour, for example, ah, because okay. they are uh, very heavy yeah. for the systems. Yeah. Others, I want to do it one minute, in one minute at the one. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, first, um, you can um, uh, have self-monitoring of the Cacta system. There are some plugins that I created some years ago that tell you how uh, long the polling takes and how many resources it, it uses. That's the first one. Second one is, with 087, we created some better uh, uh, equilibrium between the different polling threads. Um, it's not very fine-grained, it, it, it may help. Uh, third one, um, currently it is possible to have different uh, polling intervals within one Cacti installation, but it's not, uh, let's say this way, very well supported. Uh, I would call it bad supported. <laughs> If you have enough knowledge uh, of RD tool, you can do it, uh, but it's not easy to use. We had to drop it because the code that we provided with 087A was simply buggy, faulty, crap. That's it. So we deactivated most of it, but the rest is still in there, and if you know how to use it and how to define your RD files, you can go it this way but requires some knowledge, at least of our tool, not, not mostly on the uh, Cacti. You have to create new RA definitions. That's it, that's the key. You've talked about uh, the MySQL caching for, for yep. RD, and is it possible to change the RD uh, databases to, to MySQL so that I have, uh, may access the data the gather data later um, on with some... In, in principle, it would be possible, and there's again a plugin called DSStats, which does so, for example, to, to cache data for other plugins to do st statistical reports. Um, but we do not change completely to, to MySQL based in favor of RD tool, simply because of the graphing. We, we do like the RD tool graphs <laughs> and the magic within there. Uh, other don't, okay, fine. Um, and for the RD graphs, we need the RD files, that's it. So f as an intermediate, yes, we, we have it, uh, but not for graphing. Okay. No more questions there. So thank you very much. Yeah. We thank enjoyed you well. this. I will hang around today and tomorrow, and everyone who has more questions or want to have a look at the currently running system is welcome. Thank you. <laughs>